how the slides appeared. So first of all, thank you, Beat, for inviting me. And uh, during the preparation of this conference, uh, Beat was asking me to, to give some insight and, and meaning on uh, how uh, these points that we discuss now, uh, what does this mean for a CMO? How, how we contribute to uh, uh, the uh, risk taking of, of companies who want to bring an, an good idea, an early stage product into clinical trials and hopefully uh, at, a, uh, at some point into the clinic. Uh, I'm working at a mid-size uh, CMO located in Europe and our main business is uh, in the field of biopharmaceuticals as well as uh, liposome formulations. I will now uh, present you something, some insight into the points how we contribute uh, into this field and uh, what it would mean uh, for us when we get in contact at very early stage uh, with clients, in many cases small biotech, uh, who come with an early stage development and how we support them to bring this into the clinic and to any further steps. Uh, one of the key documents in this field is the uh, 2015 published uh, draft guidance uh, for industry on uh, liposomal drug products. Of course, this is mainly uh, uh, built or, or describes uh, activities and, and, and uh, steps, uh, parameters, everything to be uh, investigated and worked on uh, for Doxil, which is one of the major uh, player in, in the uh, liposomal drug products and, and uh, a success, as we all know. But we should take this information uh, also for any other liposomal drug products, and you might be aware of this. Uh, there are a lot of oligonucleotide drug products in, in, different, lipo uh, in different clinical stages up to phase three by now. Uh, at the end of a drug product uh, and as well as process development, therefore, there always comes an, an IMPD in Europe or INDA in US. And these documents should also give us the guidance uh, on which parameters to work on because here we see uh, very, very fine uh, what has to be presented to the authorities at the end of the day. And you will see over the next minutes uh, some bullet points taken from this uh, framework for this uh, IMPD uh, document. And I will go in a little bit more into details describing uh, how a CMO can, con can contribute to and, and what it means from a chemical process as well as a process step point of view. When you look at this uh, uh, development uh, scheme or, or, or process flow, uh, we have to uh, think of what does it mean uh, from a raw material point of view, what does it mean from a compounding, from the formulation, from the processing. A very uh, important point is the sterilization, which you might know is, is not the easiest, especially when we think of uh, particulate uh, drug products and also from a quality control point of view. Uh, when we uh, look at these sections in the IMPD for the raw materials, uh, you really should uh, think of uh, does the raw material which I buy at a, 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 a supplier, do we have specified uh, uh, parameters when, when we bring it into our systems. How are the analytical procedures? And we need them to be set up in a very robust way already at the beginning, because just by this we can uh, guarantee that we will create a, a very reproducible process from the very early stage up to clinical trials and hopefully at some point to the market. Uh, other points we should for sure consider is uh, that the materials are of non-animal origin and if so, that we can uh, certify that it's of no risk when we use uh, products like this. Uh, 
when you look at these chemicals, uh, either excipients, API, or lipids, uh, in, in the case of, of LMP liposome production, we have to uh, think of purity, impurities, degradation products, uh, process-related impurities like residual solvents or heavy metals, which we very often see uh, on the CFAs of, of, of these uh, lipid compounds. But as important are the microbiological uh, attributes like endotoxin or bioburn values. As mentioned before, TSE, BSE statements, certificate of origin uh, is, is as important once we move the process from preclinical into clinical evaluation. And as I mentioned before, and this is very often underestimated when we start with a project like this by our clients, the analytics have to be set up and in place right at the beginning. Otherwise, we do not know at the end of the day which materials uh, were used at the beginning in case there is any change to the drug product over the uh, process of development. Uh, and this has a special impact in, in our field when we see oxidation, hydrolysis, or any other degradation process uh, at the end of the day in our drug product. And here we know that poor quality of raw materials, which nowadays is anyway not an issue, but also harsh process condition can influence your, your drug product quality uh, by showing up at, in your drug product degradation products. Coming to the next point, and this is the area where, where my uh, business is, is more in, is the compounding formulation point. And you know, in, in many, uh, uh, first of all, again, here the bullet points, what we have to bring at the end of the day in the IMPD or INDA, it's the manufacturing process per, uh, development parameters, a description of the manufacturing process, and so on. But I will come to this in the next slides more in detail. When you see, when a client come to us, many, many cases, they already come with a, a formulation or with a process, sometimes, and this is more the rare case, just with an API, which is reformulated. But in case a process is set up, we really have to uh, explain and, and show the people that the GMP process is not just a lab scale process multiplied by 100. They really have to uh, get the, the important information that things like process steps, for instance, centrifugation can hardly be applied on a large scale process or can be controlled in a way that it's GMP compliant. Process hold times which may not be an issue at a very small scale, have a major impact on large-scale processes, uh, which we then use for providing uh, clinical trial material. In addition, you have to figure out that the, the process uh, conditions as well as the process equipment is appropriate. And like uh, described for the raw materials, also at this stage, we have uh, a setup of uh, robust and uh, appropriate analytical methods in place. Uh, for instance, uh, I remember from my early days at the, at the university, when you want to do to, to some formulation work, you simply take material which is available and you don't care about any quality attributes that you use. We as CMO have to take care that uh, these materials for instance, plastics, are certified according to USB class 6, that uh, we take care in case of filter material needed, bags, etc. that uh, depending on the, on the product we work on, uh, that there are no extractables or leachables. So we also have to take care that we get from the, Roma, from the consumable supplier documents like the, the validation guides. Further information which is needed is where this material has been produced. Is it in a sterile or non-sterile uh, delivered? Uh, is it in a, in a clean room produced or will it be used in a clean room on our site? And ex expiration date, 
microbial, bioburn, etc. All this information is necessary, and this has an impact on our activities uh, which contribute uh, to this field. Uh, process. We, over years, all or most of the processes transferred to polymoon or products have been developed in the film method, which is a very easy and, and nice method when you want to generate 2 ml of liposomes or LMPs. But to, to, tra uh, to transfer this technology, where a thin lipid film is formulated at this round bottom flask and liposomes are then generated by rehydration of this film, this can hardly be scaled up. So our activity in this field was to transfer and also at this point hardly scalable process, the ethanol injection into a fully scalable technology where we replace the steering of the aqueous phase by pumping it from one vessel to a second vessel. And on this way, we can add the lipid solubilized in ethanol at a very uh, uh, robust and, and controllable condition. And the process parameters which have influence on the particle size are listed here. By all of these uh, parameters, we can control particle size as well as particle homogeneity, encapsulation rate, etc. And this technology allows us to produce uh, liposomes up to uh, several hundred uh, liters of, of intermediate volume. As, uh, as you can see here, the process, the liposome formation, takes place outside the vessels. It's in an online mixing process. And a scale-up increase is simply by adding bigger vessels or parallelizing this technology. At the end, or during the, the uh, way to the uh, market, we have to run a uh, process validation. And this is also a an, an very important activity which costs a, a lot of, of effort on our side to bring a, a, a product into this stage. As you can see here, you normally start uh, with the development program, you, you write development reports, and then you do engineering runs, a few GMP batches which support the early clinical trials, and then you summarize this in a uh, manufacturing history report. Based on this document, uh, you do the failure mode and effects analysis, which then uh, defines the critical quality attributes, the, uh, all the other things like the, con uh, the critical process parameters, key process parameters, and non-key pro process parameters. Then, once you have this defined, you normally use a modified downscale model, uh, run experiments based on these parameters you identify before, and maybe then you have to redefine uh, these parameters. At the end of, of these uh, critical steps, you should end up with a validated process which allows you to transfer your, pro your product to the market. A very critical point, as you, as you know, is uh, that uh, especially in case of an uh, injectable drug product, is that we provide to the patient uh, a sterile product. And in our field, as we are working uh, with, with products uh, somewhere related to, to biological, biopharmaceutical, the only uh, way how you can do the sterilization process is uh, the 0 0.2 micrometer filtration, sterile filtration. And the critical step towards a sterile product uh, is for sure the control, control process. And in this case, the process validation is unavoidable also at a very early stage. And this is, uh, for, for most of or many of our clients, always a point we have to discuss because process validation means a lot of raw material being used. And, and this is for a, a small size biotech, always a, a huge investment on, on raw materials. Uh, related to this, we should also discuss uh, the points uh, uh, which uh, have to be addressed in the IMPD, 
uh, concerning a container closure system, uh, primary packaging, and, and stability. And here, uh, the, the valve size and filling volume is also a, a compromise and, and where we have to uh, work on in, in a joint way because it's, you really have to distinguish between uh, losses on the material which is being filled and applicability of the valve size and the filling volume that you do. And, uh, and you can imagine at that early stage, at uh, those evaluation studies, there might be a lot of materials uh, uh, being lost because you just take out a, a low amount. But uh, on the other side, once you go to higher injected volumes, uh, it's not easy for the clinician if they have to take out uh, materials out of three, four, or five hours. In case of stability studies, uh, you have to do at the very early stage, and this should be anyway part of your IMPD. Uh, stability studies, in use stability, and uh, compatibility studies. Uh, coming to the last point of, of my presentation is that the quality control point. And here again, we have to uh, think of what is the, the uh, framework in, 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 in this field uh, with respect to uh, IND, IMPDs. And we have to address this uh, during the course of this product development. And, and here I really have to emphasize that we have to do a, a setup of release specification and, specifica and, and specification ranges which meet the data that uh, have been achieved during early stage, during preclinical and early clinical patches. It should not be a wish list. It should reflect data that we get from processes. Uh, release specification uh, versus stability specifications. And this should also be based on, on, on the development data. Uh, normally, authorities accept a, a tighter release specification, but also a slightly wider uh, stability specification if, if there is some uh, issues with uh, degradation over time. Uh, what we should also think of, not every characterization method which is uh, being applied on the drug product should be part of the release testing specification. I think there are much more uh, analyzing being undertaken, but all not, not all these data, especially if they are qualitative method, should be part of the, of the CFA of your drug product. Uh, here's a list of, of uh, an analytical methods which are normally applied on a, on a, a liposomal drug product. And uh, here is, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, at least to, to my understanding, that the most, one of the most critical points as they are related to patient safety are this microbiological uh, related method. And here I speak about sterility testing as well as uh, pyrogenicity testing of these uh, drug products. And uh, it, it has been shown that especially in the field of endotoxin testing, liposomal drug products can be um, uh, a hurdle. And uh, especially to, to qualify or, or validate these systems. And for this purpose, it's also important to start sooner than later. Yeah, this is a, a slight overview on, on reference projects that we have. And here I want to thank you for your audience. Thank you.